Awesome. Y'all in John 4 yet? Y'all there? All right. Let me set it up. This is the Samaritan woman, and she's about to enter into a life changing conversation with the one who changes everything. Tell someone, say, all it takes is one conversation. In fact, let me ask you a question. Have you had one conversation with Jesus that changed everything? Do you remember the conversation? Do you remember where you were? Let me ask it this way. Do you remember the day you were marked by God? Do you remember the moment where tears flowed out of your eyes because you finally felt love for the first time? Do you remember the moment when you were in your car and somebody came into the room and and you you didn't know what it was, but it was the Holy Spirit that came into your car to let you know that everything was going to be all right? Do you remember the one conversation you had where everything changed? Jesus is about to have this conversation with the Samaritan woman. This woman is a thirsty woman. That's why I say she was thirsty. Not just physically thirsty, but spiritually thirsty. Like some of y'all in this room who are spiritually thirsty. Thirsty, but I prophesied that the thirst that you really need, you will experience by the end of this gathering. I prophesied those who need the joy of the Lord will receive the joy of the Lord in this room. I'm not going to stop. I prophesied that those who are empty in their spirits would begin to feel the presence of God in this room. If you believe it, say amen. Here's why I'm saying it. For those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they are satisfied. Those are not my words. Those are the scriptures. Amen? Come on. She was, she's, she's a thirsty girl. Have you ever been thirsty? No, forever. Have you ever been thirsty? My mama was one of those people where, like, when we grew up, when she said, when you, when you went outside, you had to stay outside. And the only way to, to get water was the water hose. Anybody else got the same mama or grandma? Y'all remember when the water, that water used to be so good. Ooh, it hit different when it's hot. You got <laughs> she, was, she was thirsty. And I remember days that I've been thirsty. And um, I had the option of either drinking soda or water. You ever, anybody ever have those moments where you got like you got two choices? You can drink water or you can drink soda. I would always choose soda because because the truth is this: I just like the fizz. I like the bubble. I like I like soda so strong that it makes you like almost pass out. You know what I'm talking about? Like the fizz is so strong, you just got. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You get a little tear. Tear. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Look, she, she lifted her whole hand. She like, break, put your hands down. I've had moments where I've chosen soda over water. But when I chose soda over water, the soda produced more thirst. And I learned quickly that my choice of choosing soda only produced more thirst because soda is a fabrication of something else. It has a little bit of what can quench your thirst, but it has more of what is not able to quench your thirst. And because it can't quench your thirst, I quickly realized that soda is nothing more than a distraction to my thirst. We're preaching about soda right now. I feel like the Holy Spirit said today on Resurrection Sunday that he's about to remove thirst distractions in our lives. Anything, tell somebody, say anything that is a thirst distractor in your life, he's about to uproot so that the well of living water that is meant to be within you can style, can finally have a flow that God wants it to have. No, 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 you ain't there yet. Tell somebody else, say anything in your life that's a thirst distractor, it gotta go. I don't care if it's your, if it's your cousin, I don't care if it's Pookie, Ray Ray, John John, it don't matter. Some of y'all about to remove some family members who've been distracting you. Some of you are gonna have to let go that job because the money 
is distracting you. Uh oh, I'm preaching. Some of y'all about to let go John John because he ain't the real one. He's a distraction. You're about to let her go because she ain't the one. She's a distraction from your righteous thirst manifesting. I am preaching. I know y'all want me to preach about the, I know, no, no, no. But he told me to preach about thirst. Yeah. Go to John chapter four, verse three. This Samaritan woman has a thirst issue. She's had distraction after distraction and God's about to unlock the flow in her well. He says, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And as he had, and he, and, uh, um, excuse me, and he had to pass through Samaria. Tell somebody, say he had to. It wasn't an option. Verse five says, so he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Underline that if you can. So Jesus, weary as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Verse seven. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Let me set this up. Jesus is talking. Jesus, who was a Jew, is talking to the Samaritan. They don't get along. Tell somebody, say, they don't get along. They don't get along at all. Usually, Jews would go around Samaria through a river just to get to where they wanted to go because they didn't want want to pass through. Samaria because Samaria was engrafted with people who were Jews and Gentiles. In other words, they were intermarital and people had racial issues. Racism don't exist. It was in the Bible. Okay. (laughs) Jesus is having a conversation with somebody that he knows he should not be having a conversation with. But before he has the conversation, notice that he sends his disciples away. Because sometimes those who are closest to you can't understand the assignment that God gives to you. And they become the distraction when God wants to do something that they won't agree with. Be careful of the people who are so close to you that they can't hear the God in you when God is trying to say something different than they've ever experienced in their life. Listen, I wanted to go to West Palm, but the Lord said, come to Fayetteville. I noticed that people treat Fayetteville like Samaria. If I can go around it, I'll go around it. But can I tell you what God's about to do in Fayetteville? It's called Faithville, and Faithville is about to be known once as a place that was desolate will now be a place as an army of God. I'm not talking about the physical army. I'm talking about the spiritual army. The place that people used to ignore will be the place that people come and say, look what God has done. Chill, chill. Sometimes you gotta send the most people who are closest to you away to do the thing that God wants you to do when they can't understand what it is that God's saying, do. Jesus is having a conversation, but notice that they had the conversation at Jacob's well. So I say Jacob's well. Interesting that this is having, this is happening at a well because wells are very known in the Bible, but there's a lot of relationships that are birthed in wells. Did you know that? Let me remind you of a few of them. Isaac who was one of our forefathers, he met his wife, Rebecca, at a well. Jacob met his wife, Rachel, at a well. Moses encountered seven sisters, and out of those seven sisters, one of those sisters, Zipporah, was his wife. Where did he find her? At a well. There is something about wells and God. And now Jesus is having a conversation with a woman who's not had uh, four husbands, but five husbands, and the one she's with ain't hers. And he's having this whole conversation where? At a well. Five husbands, and the one you with is the one who's your boo boo with benefits. I'm going to turn this way because I know y'all ain't got no boo-boos with benefits. Everybody married in here. Let the married folks say, hey. Let those who are single say, wait. Clink, clink, lock, lock. A 
well is designed to be the supply of water. It's not the supplier, it hosts the supplier. It's designed to be connected to a flow or a spring of water to host water to make sure that everybody else who is thirsty gets it. There's something about wells in this scripture that I want us to discover today, okay? Tell someone, say, wells don't produce, wells host. Only way to get the water is it has to be connected to living water. Living water is known as moving water. Here's the title of my message. Write it down if you're going to take notes today. You are God's well. Tell somebody, say, you are God's well. If that's the case, here's your number one point. Handle your well well. Tell somebody, say, handle your well Well, John 7, verse 38, it says, whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Where does it flow? From within who? Him. Notice the Bible says that he calls it living water. Living water is not stagnant water. Living water is moving water. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, anybody believes in Jesus Christ in this room? If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, the Bible declares that because you believe in him and you have the Holy Spirit now living on on the inside of you, the Bible declares that out of your belly will flow rivers of moving water. It means whatever is on the inside can't stay on the inside. It has to work its way on the outside because your well ain't for you. No, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. We come to church, feed, 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 feed me, feed, 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 feed me, drink, 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 right? But, but if I understand the scriptures correctly, uh, we shouldn't just come to the gathering just to get. We should come to this gathering to give because you are a well that will spring up, the Bible says. And if we are a true well of God and the well that we host is the water or the Holy Spirit, then that means you can't just get, get, get. You got to start giving, giving, giving. I'm preaching better than y'all amen it right now. In other words, when I say it's moving water, I mean that it is filled and, 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 and revealed with the nature of God. It means that the truth of God's divine grace is so much inside of you that you can no longer keep it to yourself. It means that the spirit of the Lord is so in you and the God has been so good to you that his faithfulness can't stay inside of you. You've got to tell somebody. Living water, moving water is the evidence that when he healed your body you didn't just keep it to yourself but you opened your mouth and you told somebody else what God did moving water it's not that you just got saved it's not that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you you are now telling your friends what God did for you does anybody in this room have moving water living on the inside of them tell somebody say are you living with living water. So handle your well, well. John 4, verse 6, in this story, Jesus is saying, he's, he's saying, listen, I know we're having conversations and we've had differences, but I'm specifically about to change the trajectory of your life because you've been coming to this well, but leaving still thirsty. I'm not going to ask the question that I want to ask because I don't want to offend y'all. Do you show up to the gatherings on Sundays but still thirsty when you leave? That's all right. That's okay. I really appreciate it. Who said that? Th- thank you. Because see, you remind me of the Samaritan woman. Everybody else is like, I'm good, I'm good. He says, sometimes. And I, and I, have, to, I have to agree, because sometimes my feelings get in the way. But my spirit still knows the truth. See, 
This well that is on the inside of you is not a well of flesh. It's a well of the Holy Spirit. You are hosting the Spirit of God. And when I host the Spirit of God, then the Spirit of God begins to move me into releasing what God has placed on the inside of me. Verse six, go there really quick. Jesus is at this well and he says, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied from his journey sat by what? Sat by the well. Notice Jesus is resting, but Jesus doesn't just rest anywhere. If Jesus is resting somewhere, Jesus has thought about where he's going to rest because the son of man won't lay his head just anywhere. Y'all got to get this. He's chosen to rest at Jacob's well. It's not that he needed the rest. That's the most important thing. Here it is. It's where he rested. He rested at Jacob well, Jacob's well because Jacob... If you start to look back at the story of what Jacob did, Jacob was known and respected by not just Jews, but Jacob was respected by Samaritans. Jacob was respected by Jews and Gentiles. Jacob had a history that even though he was a trickster, when God transformed his life, he became common ground for everybody. Jesus is having a conversation with somebody he has nothing in common with at a place known as common ground. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Jesus, who's a Jew, is having a conversation with a Samaritan woman who is the opposite of him in a place known as common ground. Could it be that Jesus was having this conversation with the opposite person? because he was about to level the playing field. That what was just known for Jews and only set for Jews, God, would now be set for Gentiles. That's why you can't have a well that is only for you. Because when you start to have a well that is only for your kind, you start to move back into a religious state of mind. But the well that God has given you is a well that is for everybody. Let me be a little bit more specific. The well is not just for Christian people. Your well is for the prostitutes. Your well is for the homeless. Your well is for the poor. Your well is for the family member who gets on your nerves. Your well is for the downcast. Your well is for the people who need healing. Your well is for those who need freedom. Your well is for those who might smell bad. Your well is for the people who can't afford a hotel. Your well is for the people who don't have it all together. Stop looking for people who look like you. Jesus didn't go to people who look like him. Jesus went to people who everybody else rejected. Jesus went to Zacchaeus. Jesus went to the tax collector. Jesus went to everybody else that was rejected because his well was not for Tell somebody to say, your well is for the world. Uh. (laughs) Stop being racist with your anointing. Stop being prejudiced with God on the inside of you. Stop being prejudiced with the Father on the inside of you. Stop withholding God's anointing for those who look just like you. God is for black. God is for white. God is for Asian. God is for Hispanic. God is for the up and God is for the down. God is for the rich. God is for the poor. God is for those who have houses. God is for those who don't. God is for the crackhead. God is for the one who's been set free. God is for those who are bound. God is for those who are free. God is for those who are healed. And God is for those who need healing. Tell somebody to say, go well. It's for the world. Give God praise. Yeah. The days are over where we decide ourselves when to release God's anointing. No, his anointing is on you so that any given point, whoever you meet is in need of God can be released and can receive what God needs. Your will is not for you.
They keep trying to move me out of downtown. I say, I'm not moving out of downtown. Why? Because I've heard churches leave downtown. You want to know why they leave downtown? Because of the homeless. I'm not leaving downtown because the homeless need a church. Why would we leave? What? You afraid because they smell? What? You afraid because they need money? He gave you that money. It ain't your money. Give it to them if you got it. I believe that more church will be a city set on a hill. My prophesy today, a hundred acres so that we can build a place for the homeless. I prophesy a hundred acres. A hundred acres come to me now. Why? Because my well is not for... Ah! My well ain't for the well. My well ain't for the well. My well is for the sick. My well is for the poor. My well is for the downcast. My well is for those who need deliverance. That's why you can't be afraid to lay your hands and say, come out in Jesus' name. That's why you can't be afraid to say, be healed in Jesus' name. That's why you can't be afraid to get into conversations that may be controversial, but in the middle of that conversation, the peace of God can rightly divide and bring truth. Oh. I ain't preaching about the cross no more, just to preach about it. If we're gonna preach about the cross, we're gonna live it. I read my Bible and the more I begin to read it, I realized that the anointing that was on Jesus, the well that was in Jesus for the Holy Spirit was not for Jesus. I did not come to condemn the world nor shame you from your wrong. I come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. The days are over where we're judging the world. Stop judging people who don't know they need Jesus yet. Use the well on the inside of you to show people, I got them, you need them. I got them, you need them. All right, tell somebody to say, my will is not just for me, it's for the world. Jesus is telling this woman, I am here right in this specific place to destroy the idea that God alone is for one group of people. One conversation with Jesus stirred this woman's will. And you know the story. He begins to tell her everything about her life. He says, go find me. Go get your husband. Jesus never asked questions just to ask questions. Remember, he's having a conversation at a well in an area that was known as common ground in an area that did not show common ground. He says, go get your husband, and she says, I ain't got one. He's like, well, you know what? You told the truth. You've had five. Uh, See, we, we, we get stuck on the negative. We don't realize. The Lord was just trying to see, was there any truth in her? Because if there's something good in you, I can work with it. See, we so fixed on that she had five husbands that we didn't realize God rewarded her for her truth that she was able to speak. See, God don't need you to be perfect. He just needs to know that there is something that is him living on the inside of you. See, God could work with the Samaritan woman because there was truth that was starting to come up out of her. And for the first time in a long time, when she said the truth, they didn't leave her. They didn't reject. He didn't reject her. Because the Bible says she had five. We don't know. I don't know if they died. We don't know. So I can't, we can't speculate that. So I'm not trying to like fluff that part of it. Here's what we do know. She had five. And the one she was with wasn't her boo. I mean, wasn't her husband. It was her boo with benefits maybe. You know, life insurance. Package deal. 401k. Maybe had stocks. I don't know.
John 4, 28 says, the woman then left her water pot. That's interesting. Into the city and said to the men, come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Now this is, this is very interesting because he never told her everything, Nikki, he had ever done. So that's what I say. He never told her everything he had ever done. But this is what happened. She goes back and he says, come and see a man who told me everything I had ever done. See, he never told everything she had done because we'd be there all day. But what he did say was everything she could think about. See, her whole life was that I have had five husbands and I don't belong. You got to remember, she came, at, she came at the sixth hour, which was the hottest part of the day. And women didn't come during that time because it's just hot. Black people don't come out when it's hot. We just don't. Stop asking us to swim at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We barely swim, but we definitely ain't swimming until after 7.30. My God, I'm preaching. <laughs> you need lessons. Black people, we got to do better. Go take swimming lessons now. All right, I'm just joking. Here's why I'm being funny, because my wife is white and we got mixed kids, and so our kids are divided. I only got one out of five kids that don't like to swim during the day. The other four, they all like, let's go swim. I'm like, y'all are not mine. Come and see a man who told me everything I had ever done. He never said everything, but he did say everything that had consumed her mind. He spoke to the things that everybody else had judged her for so that her mind could be free. See, when God speaks to you, one conversation can set you free from a mind full of things that don't belong on your mind anymore. When you have the conversation you need with God, God will remove the things that have flooded your mind and the light of God will come into your mind and into your heart and remove the heaviness and the burden from your life. And watch this, she got so set free that she didn't care about her, her, her past marital status. She was like, I don't care if I've had five. I'm about to tell about this one who didn't reject. I'm about to tell about the one who saw me for the first time. He, he saw everything, but he saw me. He saw everything I had did, but he was still able to see me. Anybody grateful that despite everything that God knows about you, everything that is in your closet, because everybody got something in their closet, are you sincerely grateful that despite what he sees, he still sees? Everyone judges the outer appearance, but my God judges the heart. Tell somebody, say, judge everything else, but he still sees the real me. Anybody grateful that God can see right through? Yeah. Why? Why? Why would he say it? Because, because maybe Jesus knew that there would be people in 2023 who maybe had four or five husbands. And, 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 and you wouldn't have an excuse anymore to get hung up on your past. See, listen, stop getting hung up on what you've been through and get hung up on who God has said you are. Get hung up on who God calls you to be. Listen, maybe, maybe it was more so about God showing her who she really was so that you could start valuing who you really are. The days are over where we start to tell people more about what we are than instead of telling people about who God is on the inside of us. The days are now here where your testimony 
is the thing that God needs. God needs your testimony. The day is here where the world is saying, I've read about God, but I can't see him. Can I tell you how the world's gonna see God? Through your well. And your well is your testimony. Your well is his spirit on your life. Your well is. I was addicted to pornography, but he set me free. Your will now is I used to be a prostitute, but now I'm set free. Your will is I was once in the streets, but now I'm in the house of God. Now the day is are here where you used to say, I used to have a love for money, but now I have a love for God. I used to have a love for the streets, but now I have a love for God. I used to have a love for everything else. When's the last time you invited somebody to church to say, come and see? And the moment they got here, the moment they got here, they saw a worship on the inside of you that they never seen. When was the last time you invited somebody here? When, when you got here, your praise began to move them into a place of freedom. The days are over where you hold back God in your life. What's the point of having God if you go hold God back in your life? What's the point of having resurrecting power on the inside of you? if you're never going to release resurrecting power what's the point of having his strength his grace his mercy his power his love his kindness his forgiveness on the inside of you if you ain't gonna let it out the days are here the day is here where I'm about to tell the world come and see a man who Come and see a man who restored my marriage. Come and see a man who set me free. Come and see a man who broke the addiction of alcohol off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jesus has a conversation at a well in a name known for common ground to say once and for all, Victoria, Jesus is for everybody. Rich, Jesus is for everybody. Be careful you don't start acting brand new when you get him. That's why he keeps thorns in the believer so that we never forget what he did for us. I said that Jesus was having this conversation in a common place and he was talking to somebody he had nothing in common with because he wanted to have something in common with her. The thing that God wants to have in common with you, despite your past, is the one who lives in you. The common thing in you and God is His Spirit. It's time to release the Spirit of God within you. Here's your third point. Your well is full of God, not your past. Stay right there. I told you earlier, it's not that he just rested, but it's where he rested. Somebody say Jacob's well. See, we call him Jacob, but the Bible says that Jacob had a name change. I wanted to preach this and lose my voice, but I got another gathering that I got to preach for. We keep calling it Jacob's well. But if we knew rightly, we would call it Israel's well. <sighs> it's not that he just needed rest. It's where he rested. Don't miss it. Jacob had a moment where he had to wrestle with God. He was wrestling 
with the angel. And the angel prophesies something over Jacob. And then later on, Jacob's name gets changed. The, the angel says, he says, after he wrestled with them and Jacob won the battle, he says, your name will be Israel. From, from trickster to Israel. See, Israel means to retain God. It means a receptacle of God. What's a receptacle? What is it? it it's a conduit that holds something. Israel is a receptacle of God. Jesus is having a conversation at a well that holds, okay. <laughs> having a conversation with a woman that has been known for her past in an area that is acknowledged as common ground. When Jesus was having this conversation with a woman, he was letting her know, I have to sit on this well because I'm putting the lid on what used to be known as trickster water. And it will forever be known as a receptacle that hosts me. Listen, he had to have the conversation with the Samaritan woman because he was about to change not her physical name, but her spiritual name. She would never be known. Eh, 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 eh. Don't, don't miss it. Because my Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the... What did she do after she told him? She went and told. She said, the only way to get my past in the past is to put his blood and my testimony over everything they've ever known. Why don't you just open your mouth and start telling people what God's done about you instead of leaving it up to the imagination of people to say what you used to do? Why don't you use Instagram to tell people what God has done in your life now? Why don't you use Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok to start telling people, come and see a man who has done everything for me and and watch this. She was, she was so excited about who he was that she went and told people who should have rejected it because Jews and Samaritans don't get along. But you know how to bring people who don't know how to have common ground together? by putting the thing that everybody needs in the middle of the conversation. She said, listen, I know we've had disagreements on who we are and who this Jew is, but the thing I just discovered is the thing that's about to level the playing field. And so Jesus is for you and me. Jesus is for the Gentile and the Jew. Let me put it in layman's terms. Jesus is for the broken and Jesus is for the healed. Jesus for your cousin Pookie who ain't yet been saved and you who have been saved. Jesus is for your coworker who gets on your everlasting nerves. Jesus is for your boss who gets on your everlasting nerves. Jesus is for your spouse who is yet to come to Jesus. Jesus is for the city that shall be saved. Yeah. Stand on your feet. Tell someone, say, Jesus is for everybody. What are you doing with your well? It's time to release what God has placed on the inside of you and release it to the world. Your well is not for you. Your well is for the world. Tell someone, say, my well it's for the world. It's messages like this that we want to continue to take all around the world. Will you consider partnering with the Vision of Mark Church by texting Mark Church 
to 77977.